In this presentation, I will show how to design a strategy for warehouse picking using a simulation approach. Our problem is to balance the workload across the entire warehouse, starting with picking and then considering the downstream processes induction, packing and manifest. Throughout the simulation project, four topics will be addressed. The first topic presents a brief description of the problem and the central figures that contextualize the project's goal and scope. The proposed methodology for wave planning will also be discussed here. The EMEA Block Distribution Center, which will be called MDC from now on, addressed in the simulation project handles footwear and apparel products. In addition to the specific workflows associated with footwear and apparel products, MDC is facing an increasing demand for SKUs. The MDC must handle three different order types. They are single orders, multi-item orders, and case picks. The graphs of the demand per week of SKUs, or per order type, show that the MDC must find the planning methodology capable of dealing efficiently with the expected variability for the next three months. Overall, the situation is pressuring the operations and the service level of the MDC. Our goal is to find a better planning methodology to improve the efficiency of the MDC. As you can see in the graph on the left, the total demand per zone of the MDC is quite variable. Thus, the allocation of pickers must handle this situation. In the right side graph, we can see the layout of the warehouse. The warehouse storage space is split into a north area and a south area, each comprised of shelving gills that run perpendicular to the induction conveyor. The MDC is transitioning to a wave picking management methodology. This means that waves will coordinate pickers that collect units from their storage locations. This simulation project will look into improvement opportunities related to workforce optimization, minimization of missed customer deliveries, and the analysis of the storage location of the footwear and apparel products on the shelves. The wave picking methodology must balance the workload across the entire warehouse to ensure that the MDC will have a stable workforce over time. This objective must be accomplished together with two other relevant goals, the service level goal and the direct orders goal. The scope of the project includes the picking tasks from shelved storage and ends with packing and shipping the orders. The conceptual model has been divided into three main blocks. The first block is the wave planning methodology that proposes a three-step approach for balancing, sequencing and grouping orders. The details of this method will be revealed in the next slide. The second and third blocks implement a control logic for pickers allocation to waves and the waves processing and shipping. As can be seen in the graph, different workflows must be implemented for the case, multi-item or single waves. The main purpose of the wave planning methodology is to generate a plan that balances the MDC workload during the three months of operation. The first step determines the release day for each individual order. This is useful for leveling the workload over time while respecting guard constraints such as the delivery time windows and pickers capacity. Here, a mixed integer programming problem model has been developed using an external software. The second step performs order sequencing. This is a critical step for sequencing orders based on the due date and processing time criteria. Here, it is applied the dynamic rule for defining the priority of the orders. The rule calculates a critical ratio factor, which is the difference between the delivery due date and the release date divided by the delivery processing time. Then calculate the priority index named Z, which is the maximum value between critical ratio times the delivery processing time and the delivery processing time. Orders with the smallest value of Z have higher priority and should be waived first. In the last step of the methodology, we group orders into waves according to attributes of release date, stage, type, and due date. This process has been implemented in Simio and runs at the beginning of each simulation to automatically generate waves. Further details of this process will be explained in the next section. The next step after formulating and conceptualized problem is developing the model itself. Building, validating and verifying are critical steps that must be followed to guarantee that the simulation model is representing the real system with the right level of detail. Here, the main processes and control logic developed are presented. As said previously, one of the most relevant steps of the wave planning methodology is to group orders into waves. This task is performed using a simio process that creates waves sequentially at the beginning of the simulation. The criteria for grouping orders to the same wave is given by a simio condition expression that considers the order earliest release date, stage, type, and due date, and also the reference wave size. 
The overall structure of the process is shown on the left upper side of the slide. Another relevant control logic is to seize the available material handling equipment. The MDC currently has two types of material handling equipment for transporting SKUs, pallet jacks and forklifts. The pallet jacks are only available for use on the ground since they cannot reach the upper shelves, and the lift trucks are reserved for air picks. A selection condition has been created to select the candidate material handling equipment that must respect the SKU requirements, capacity, and ground or air constraints. The model has been designed with one type of entity to represent each SKU individually. Worker CMU objects have been used for modeling the pickers and other logistic operators of the induction and packing areas. The vehicle X object was used for representing the pallet jacks and forklifts. Pickers will use this vehicle to collect SKUs from the shelves. The pallet jacks or forklifts are located based on the waiting list of SKUs that require to be picked which follows a ranking rule based on the wave number generated at the beginning of the simulation. The overall workflow depends on the characteristics of the SKU. Therefore, every time an SKU is picked, the seized material handling equipment must carry the attributes of the SKUs. To prevent waves from mixing in each staging area, a wave can only be left on the respective staging area if the previous wave is fully processed. When a vehicle drops SKUs at the staging area, checks if the wave on that staging area is ready to be inducted. If so, it turns the light green for that staging area and calls the induction worker. Whenever the next wave can be released, the SKUs belonging to that wave are created and transferred to the respective wave. And finally, if the picker reaches the capacity in terms of special units or picked all the SKUs of the wave, it goes to the respective staging area to drop the items. If the staging area items are from a different wave, it needs to wait until the wave is inducted. The same happens for the singles and cases areas, except that in those areas, you can simply drop the items independently of the wave number. The model validation and verification was performed to ensure the correct implementation of the warehouse requirements in the wave planning methodology. The animation was useful to check the overall behavior of the developed control logic. Global simulation results, such as total SKU and total processing times for the different order types, have been verified with the values given in the dataset which means the total SKUs processed on the single packing, standard packing, and case manifest areas match the values given in the dataset. Also, as can be seen in this video, the material handling equipment is circulating throughout the warehouse, leaving SKUs on their respective area. With respect to the induction conveyor and respective staging areas, SKUs are accumulated until the wave is completed, and then the induction workers are called to induct the wave as it can be seen happening. After building and validating the simulation model, a set of simulation runs were performed to analyze the warehouse's behavior. The starting point for the analysis is to estimate the average requirements of the warehouse. As can be seen, comparing the current capacity of the MDC with the average demand for the next three months, the warehouse seems to have enough capacity. However, this analysis does not account for the impact of the demand variability on the warehouse capacity. We would certainly need more pickers to account for the transportation time and to handle the variability of the orders, in particular, the peaks of demand that occur on certain days. An iterative approach has been followed to determine the optimal size of the wave. The wave size is incremented in each iteration if the service level is below 99% or if the picker's utilization rate is not satisfactory. A significant conclusion is that the level of service of 99.1% can be obtained with 15 pickers for rough peak demand days. The reference value for the wave size is 450 SKU. However, the wave size is calculated dynamically depending on the demand of the distribution center. The proposed wave size is significantly smaller compared with the current value used in the warehouse. The main purpose of reducing the wave size is to create a more continuous flow, which leads to smaller buffer sizes and reduces the lead time. It also contributes to meet the 99% level of service. The utilization rate of the pickers is 86% under stationary conditions. 
in other words, considering startup and shutdown periods. This value indicates that there is still a margin of improvement of the picking tasks. In the graph and in the table, it is clear that the wave planning methodology attempts to maximize the picking output. In the final part of this presentation, I would like to provide some recommendations based on the simulation results. To guarantee a level of service superior of 99% for all types of orders, additional pickers are required for the high demand days. Other workers must change their working positions to face peak of demand of direct orders, which means orders that have a delivery time window of 24 hours. This situation occurs only in three days in November. For the rest of the time, we can reduce the number of workers in the standard packing and single packing areas, and some of them can be used on the induction to guarantee the continuous flow of multi-waves. The proposed wave planning methodology, which is based in small wave sizes, requires additional forklifts during the three peak days of November. Otherwise, we might not have enough material handling equipment for the additional pickers. The first recommendation is to adjust the single packing capacity in function of the demand peaks. Excluding the three days in November, where there is a peak of direct orders, the single packing can work with just one worker. This adjustment can be performed using one additional worker from the standard packing. This results in a level of service of 99.9%. .9%. The second recommendation is to reduce the capacity of the standard packing to four workers. Reducing the standard packing to four workers has a negligible impact on the level of service that remains at 99%. The remaining four workers will be allocated to single packing and induction area. As the final remarks, I would like to mention that decreasing the wave size creates flow in the logistic operations, which leads to smaller buffer sizes and reduced lead time, also contributing to meet the 99% level of service. Overall, the current workforce seems adequate for running the distribution center with the average expected demand. However, with demand peaks originated by direct orders, additional pickers and material handling equipment capacity is required only to three days in November of the three months planning period. Planning the demand for direct orders is critical to avoid an abrupt increase in deliveries on the same day. The MDC must define a maximum daily capacity for the direct orders to avoid the need for additional pickers. Doubling the capacity of the induction workers is required to face for the peak demand days. SKUs that tend to be ordered in large quantities should be located on the north side since the layout of this area is more adequate for picking large volumes. And the picking of small demand SKUs will benefit from the transversal corridor of the south area.